It is a privilege to be joined today on the summit by Pat Estep, who is the men's basketball coach at Cedarville, and the Yellow Jackets are coming off a national championship, 2024 NCCA National Champions. The title game, a, an 88-72 victory over Wayland Baptist, number one and number two seeds in that. Let's start there, Coach. Congratulations on the NCCAA National Championship. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, that was a really good experience for our guys. Um, and we enjoyed it. It was a great way to cap off a special year with a really good group. In in the game, I mean, obviously, over the course of a, of a tournament, you, you have the highs and the lows. Tell us a little bit about that game and the ebbs and flows and, and how you all made it through to take the title. Well, I, I think you got to go back to like just going to that tournament. That, in a lot of ways for us as an NCAA Division II school, is – you know, kind of like a uh, NIT CBI type event for us. You know, it's not the um, we have we have a ton of respect for it and we love the NCCAA. But when you start the year out, your goal is to get into the NCAA tournament. And uh, we were really close um, this year, had a good group, just a couple tough losses in a stretch in a really tough region and didn't make it. So there is there is a bit of a reset, you know, for some upperclassmen who maybe don't even want to play anymore after the end of the regular season when we got beaten the conference tournament and it was looking like we were going to be just on the outside looking in for the NCAA tournament. So we gave our guys about four days off and we said, look, we're going to this, um, you know, something we decided to do last year when we didn't do it. So, um, you know, I think just the ability of our guys to reset their minds to just kind of, Hey, we got one last go around with a, just an unbelievable locker room and a special group of young men, um, to coach, to be around. They love each other. And we just kind of had to talk them through, all right, this may not be what you set out to do, but, uh, you know, biblically, like whatever your mind, whatever God puts in front of you to do, you do it with all that you have. And um, we we're going to approach this tournament that way. And um, really proud of our guys. Uh, we had to play without our starting center, who is just kind of like, uh, he just makes us go in a lot of ways. Um, the first game and then the next game, you know, I thought we we did a better job, kind of got a little better. And then in the last game uh, against a really good Wayland Baptist team, um, that was a hard fought first half. Neither one of us were shooting great. Um, we didn't shoot well from three in the first half of any of those games. And we shot extremely well in the second half of all of the games in that tournament. But, you know, I, I was proud of our guys. I, they never played tight, um, but but they also played like they wanted it. And that's a big key when you go to that tournament. Um, and we played a really good team, really well coached team out of Wayland um, with some really talented players that were tough. Um, but we probably put together our best offensive half, maybe of the season in the second half. We were we, our, our guys were pretty special um, and it was fun to watch and be a part of. I didn't expect to be up like we were um, just because that team is so good. So. Among the, the the players on the team that had good performances, Javon Moffmer uh, in the championship game. I mean, getting close to a triple double: fifteen yeah. points, eight boards, six assists. He wound up being named the tournament's most outstanding player, GMAC Player of the Year as well. Lots of other uh, honors that are coming his way as the postseason continues uh, to send more honors his way. All district player as well. Talk about his performance. Well, he, he was really good, especially in that second half. You know, he struggled shooting the ball in the first half, and I thought he did a really good job of attacking the glass in the second half, facilitating. You know, the, the special thing about Javon is he doesn't have to score. He will, uh, but he doesn't have to. And he um, he's just a unique player that a lot of guys that are as good and as talented as he is won't let the game come to them, and yet he does. Um and I thought he did a really good job of that in the second half. He, he got assists. He was re, probably rebounded in that tournament better than he rebounded all year, which is something we had been on him about. You know, you're always trying to push him. He's such a talented player, um, but he's very unselfish sometimes to a fault. Um, and I thought that tournament, he just did a really good job of playing balanced basketball. He didn't score. I don't think he led us in scoring in any game. Um, I can't remember the second game, but he definitely did it, did it in the first game and the second game. Uh, but he was really good, um, in, especially in that second half. Chris Rogers had a tremendous tournament. Um, he's our senior or grad student point guard, and I think he averaged 20 points a game throughout those three games. Uh, Chris is just he, – he's a special kid in how he works, how tough and competitive he is. Uh, and that was on display right there in his last three games of his college career. Grant, Grant Wisman for us was a really good um, – 
player, you know, probably scored a lot more last year than he did this year, struggled shooting like he's capable of. But, man, he finished really well. Um, and it's good to have Jacob Drees back, another senior in there. Um, and then I'm just really proud of our bench. You know, that, that was a tournament that I thought early on, maybe we could get those guys some confidence heading into the offseason. And they were tremendous uh, every game. They shot better than they did during the season. They rebounded. They just played a little more confident, a little looser. Um, and I think sometimes as a coach, you learn some things, maybe about things I did to make them tight in, in moments in the latter part of the season that I've got to adjust because in that tournament, they were pretty loose and they played pretty well. So just trying to find that balance. And uh, But all in all, just proud of our group. Um, this is a special effort for them. And it's always nice, uh, even if it's not what you set out for at the beginning of the year, to cut down nets and finish with three wins. And, you know, they did it uh, with a, just a, a, one of the locker rooms. That's We've had good locker rooms at Cedarville. I don't think we've ever had one better. So, I, Listen, Coach, I think any time you end the season with a W, yeah. that, that, that's yeah. a positive one, one way or the other. We're visiting now with Coach Pat Estep from Cedarville. Again, Yellow Jackets, NCCAA national champions and we're visiting here on the summit on midwest sports net we talk about small college sports and more throughout the midwest and beyond uh, coach you mentioned the three-point shooting in the first half specifically of those games but that really wasn't an issue for you this year as uh, you all led division two in three pointers made 12.3 three pointers made per game that's really a strong number because that's really that's accounting for nearly half of your points right there outside the arc is that something that is a part of the program or was that just something this team in particular just found its stride? We've, we've always, from my time as an assistant, um, our best teams have always shot the three really well. Um, some teams have to live by it a little more than others, you know, I, and I think that's one thing that we do as a coaching staff is we're willing to adapt to whatever our team needs to make them the most successful. You know, I don't have a rigid, this is how we're going to play. This is what we're going to do. There's certain aspects of that that are pretty concrete and how we move the ball, how unselfish we play, but how fast we play, how many threes we shoot kind of depends on our personnel. And for this group, um, we didn't have a great back to the basket player. You know, our five man led us in assists the last two years. Um, so he's not necessarily a scoring punch inside as much as he was a tremendous passer. He was almost like a point forward for us. Um, so you know, this group for the last two years, we just we needed to shoot threes to be good. Um, and we needed to make sure a lot of guys could shoot them. And, and this is the best shooting team I've probably ever coached and, and been around. Um, you know, we didn't we shot a lot. I think we were second maybe to BYU in the percentage of our shot attempts being threes. Um, and we weren't second by much, but we shot pretty well, you know, and we had we had multiple games where we shot over 40 threes in a game, but we shot 40 percent. And I told people who, you know, maybe balk at that. And I'm like, hey, if you shoot 40 percent, I don't care if you shoot 63. So that's fine. You know, you can there are different ways to overwhelm your opponents. Houston, they might do it from the defensive end. Um, and there were nights where we could overwhelm people from the three point line. You know, you outscore somebody by 30 from the three point line. That's a hard number to make up. I don't care how good you are. And we did that multiple times this year. So when we were moving the ball, the ball was popping. Um, and we were getting each other shots. We had a lot of guys that could knock the ball in from out there. And that's kind of what you saw in the second half of that game. We just a lot of different guys hitting shots and it just can become a backbreaker. So um, but it really stems from guys who are unselfish. They're willing passers and they shoot it confident. You know, I don't want them thinking the worst thing you can do to shooters is make them think, you know, my only question is, are you open? That's that's it. Um, so but if if. If you're shooting 40%, 40 percent, 40 plus percent, you should be shooting 60 a game. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Shoot as many as you can get. That's what I tell them. I'll yeah. take those numbers right yeah. there. Uh, Coach, I wanted to talk about Cedarville just for a moment and, and give you a chance to share about that. I, I think it's really something that stands out to me on on the uh, even the homepage of the the website uh, motto, mission statement, whatever you want to call it. One thousand days, bolder, wiser closer to Christ. And that is uh, really what it looks like it stands for being a part of Cedarville University, taking those thousand days there. Talk about that a little bit and, and uh, how you see your role then as the coach of the men's basketball team at, at Cedarville. 
Yeah, well, I graduated from here, you know, so it definitely has a special place in my heart, my family's heart. We have two boys in college right now at Cedarville. So, um, you know, I I am a steward of this this program for this university and and for the cause of Christ. And I don't I try to do that as well as I can, you know, and our guys are our guys are reminded this is a, you know, it's a competitive environment at a very competitive level in NCAA Division Two and Sometimes my flaws are on display for everybody, including my players. Um, but, you know, for us, we don't shy away from that in recruiting and how we run our program. Um, I don't want guys who I talked in to come into Cedarville and then they get here and they're like, whoa, what, what is all this? You know, we want guys to really understand what they're getting into. And, and I think that, you know, not, not that kids won't transfer, um, but we don't have quite as many and I think part of that is because kids buy into what this place is and what it means and how special it is, um, you know, for us to be able to a lot of Christian schools use the game as outreach, which is great. You know, we want it to be outreach. But for us, it's not just outreach, it's worship. And, you know, when you view what you do as an act of worship, that that means when you play basketball, you know, whatever it is, um, as, as God's word tells us, whatever we do, we do it with all that we have as an act of worship. So we talk through that with our guys, you know, how does that affect practice? How does that affect the weight room? How does that affect how you play? Um, so I want people to be able to see a team that is selfless. You know, I, I think if you're a, you're a bunch of Christian guys on a basketball court, it should, it should look that way. Not that we're so, you know, we're not soft. Some people um, think you should be, you know, meek and mild and soft. And there's, you know, it's okay to be meek, but we're not soft. Our guys are tough, competitive. Um, Christ was, uh, we, we actually had a privilege of taking our guys to Israel this summer. And when wow. you are in that environment and you realize, all right, the, the, our Messiah was not soft. So it's not okay for us to be soft. You know, we got to be tough. We got to compete. Um, we got to be selfless. We got to persevere, you know, all the aspects of what a Christian man should be later on in life. We, we want to work through those with our guys in this program. Um, and we want to help them develop those when the stakes, I tell them all the time, these stakes are relatively low in the grand scheme of things. It's wins and losses. All right. At the end of the day, 40 years from now, no, no one cares. Um, but when you're married and when you have a family and when you're, a, you're, a, you're working, you're a member of a church, like, we don't need guys who can't persevere, who guys who are selfish, guys who aren't tough. Um, and we need the we need. And you, honestly, in this day and age, you're more of a unicorn if you have those characteristics than maybe you were 40, 50 years ago. So we're trying to develop those in our guys through the game of basketball. And yet in the meantime, show them, hey, this is worship. So give it all you got um, in all these aspects. Do your best and be a great representative of Christ, but also of Cedarville. It's a special place and we want to, we want to represent it well. So uh, that that's my role here for the time being that God has us here. You know, it's, you, you I don't know, you know, I, I'm not going to do this forever. So someday someone else will take over for me. And I hope that that, I hope we've left it better than we found it. And that, um, you know, as that some, that this is a program people can be proud of that come to our games, that work at this university. That's ultimately what we want. Well, you just finished up year 16, so I'm, I'm hoping there's year 17 at least in, in your future. And I, and I would ask you with that, uh, that uh, coming off a national championship, third time, by the way, for Cedarville to, to win an NCCA national championship, all under your leadership as well. How, how long do you take to celebrate this? And, and are, are you already, and I'm sure the answer is yes, already thinking ahead. You look at the roster too. A significant portion had senior or grad student beside their name. So uh, I, I know there there has to be some looking ahead already. Yeah, there there's there's looking ahead all the time, and that's the challenge of being a college coach. Like throughout the season, you're always trying to prepare for what you're going to need next. You know, and we we have a, one guy who may come back um, for his COVID year. Um, Javon, you know, he may not, he's got a lot of options and he's been a tremendous uh, ambassador for Cedarville and the basketball program. So, you know, wherever God leads him, we'll be in support of that. But, um, but yeah, throughout, we've got two kids signed already, uh, three, actually one, we're going to red shirt. Um, and then we've, you know, you're always kind of trying to say, all right, what does this team lack? 
you know, it's a funky thing to do this job and have on one hand, how can I make the most of what these guys can do? And on the other hand, you're just thinking about what they can't do. So you can try to fill those voids going into next year um, or develop them. You know, we're, we're a developmental program too. We don't just recruit all of our weaknesses. You know, we want to change weaknesses for our underclassmen to become strengths. And we got some really good underclassmen who were really excited about what they could be in the next year. Um, so that'll be a big piece of this trying to recruit a few guys to fit, but we also wanted to enjoy it. You know, we, we took, to, we took, we got to take two weeks off. I got away with my wife and my daughter for a few days last week before Easter. Um, and we'll buckle down this week for a couple of days, try and just reset, get some visits lined up. Um, but ultimately, you know, we do the work and God brings in the harvest and recruiting is not something that, you know, a lot of stories, we work hard at it, but a lot of the stories of how kids got here, uh, I can't take too much credit for him. You know, God, God ultimately opens doors and closes doors and we trust him in that. And uh, we work hard at it, but uh, we're, we're going to also make sure that we get kids that fit who we're about what we want to be about. Um, so we don't rush that process either. So, All right. Coach Pat Step, coach of the, Three-time now, NCCAA National Champion Men's Basketball Team. Again, big victory over Wayland Baptist and 2024 champions. Coach, it means a lot. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. Congratulations on that victory, and we look forward to seeing what comes in the next years. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate your time.